ladies and gentlemen once again welcome back to our channel and the topic for today's JCL tutorial is JCL procedures in this tutorial we'll focus on catalog and in stream procedures the entire presentation is divided into four section first one is introduction to JCL procedures in this section we will focus on the definition of JCL procedure and the different categories of JCL procedure in second section we will focus on catalog procedure and see how you can define and call these procedure from your JCLs and also try to understand how the system search a specific procedure in case if you store that procedure in a separate library other than the system library in third section we'll focus on JCL in stream procs or JCL in stream procedures and we'll see how you can define them and use them in your JCLs in last section we will focus on how to override the proc parameters and job control statements in your JCL and before I start with today's presentation I would request you all to do subscribe to our channel because we need your support to grow our channel and I would like to say a big thank you to all our subscribers who have already subscribed to our channel so let's get started with today's presentation so the term JCL stands for job control language and is basically the command language of the ZOS operating system so JCL provide a mechanism for the program to read input and write output to a requested physical resources now let's look at the definition of JCL procedure a JCL procedure is actually a pre-written segment of code consisting of one or more job steps that can be included in a job stream so in nutshell a JCL procedure is actually a piece of code that is fully tested and that can be invoked from any JCL as and when it is required so the JCL procedures are actually divided into two categories first one is catalog procedure and second one is in stream procedure and always remember that a JCL procedure will not going to have a job card and the reason behind that is that it is invoked from a JCL right so it will always have job steps that includes other relevant job control statements such as DD statements and execute statements now let's look at the benefit of using JCL procedure so first one is code reutilization second one is minimize your coding errors and the third one is it improves the productivity it actually eliminates the duplicacy of work and improves the efficiency of overall process now let's move on to the next section that is JCL catalog procedures a catalog procedure is a series of JCL statements that are stored in a partition dataset or a procedure library and it can be invoked by any JCL on the system and in order to invoke a catalog procedure you need to use an exe statement in general catalog procedures are placed in the system procedure library that is sys1.proclib or in any user specific procedure library now let's look at an example of a proc and a JCL so this is a, a proc which will execute a COBOL program that is EMPA tax so that is used to calculate the tax on employee salary and if you see uh, the first line that is the beginning of a proc so you have a, a proc name then you have a proc keyword and all the proc should end with pend right and in in between proc and pend you have all your job control statements like exe and dd statements right so i've created this proc and stored that into a system proclib and then if you look at uh, below like there's a JCL that I've created and this JCL is actually calling this proc with the help of exe statement so again this JCL is being uh, created and stored in a personal PDS and when you submit this job so it will actually call the proc from that particular system library so I've created a small animation so that you can understand how exactly things are linked 
Now let's look at a scenario where a JCL catalog procedure is not stored in a system library. It is actually stored in a user specific proc library. So how exactly system search that particular procedure when it is invoked from a JCL? Okay. So now again I'm using the same proc and JCL and you remember that the proc is started with a proc keyword and end with pend keyword, right? The only difference in this particular example is that I've stored that particular uh, proc in a user specific uh, procedure library, right? And you, if you notice the JCL, you'll find that I've just given a JCL lib order equals to the library where the proc is actually stored. Okay, and again, I'm using the exe statement to call my uh, proc, which will in turn execute the COBOL program. So when I submit this particular JCL, so system will first check the procedure in the user defined library that I've specified with the help of JCL lib space order, right? So it will first search in that in case if it do not find in that, then it will go into system library that is sys1.proclib. Now let's move on to the next section that is JCL in-stream procedures. So a JCL in-stream procedure is actually a set of job control statements that is included within the job. And you can invoke these in-stream procedure from the same JCL by providing the proc name. And remember, the JCL statements which is falling between the proc and pend statements are not executed when they are first encountered. Instead, they are scanned for the errors and retained as a temporary procedure and they are only executed when they are invoked from the JCL. And the last point is that at max you can include 15 in-stream procedures in a single JCL. Now let's look at the example how you can code an in-stream procedure in your JCL. So in this example, you have a JCL which is actually executing a COBOL program with the help of in-stream proc. And remember, in a job, when you have a job card, so the next statement should be your in-stream proc. It should not happen that you include in-stream proc in middle of the JCL. It should always be the first step after the job card. And a proc is defined with the help of proc uh, keyword and you should have a proc name, then you have a proc keyword followed by your job control statements and at the end of the proc you should always have pend. And if you look at the last line at step 01, I'm using exe and I'm just including the proc name, right? So this particular uh, example will actually invoke my in-stream proc which is included in the JCL. Now let's move on to the next section that is proc overriding section and in this section we will focus on how to override the different parameters which is used in the proc. So in general you might have come across with a situation where you need to modify the file name or maybe you want to override the parameters which is used in a proc. So the best way of doing that is uh, by using a proc overriding technique. Now let's look at the example and the syntax so that you can have a good understanding of how you can override the parameters. So the first one is execute statement. So in this case you have a step name then you have an execute keyword followed by a proc which is again a keyword and then you have a procedure name. So it would be an actual procedure name where you want to override that particular parameter. And then you have to use a parameter. For example, I want to override the time parameter in my proc. So I have to specify time dot proc step name and the value. And in the similar fashion, you can override the DD statements, which is associated to that particular proc. Now let's quickly look at an example, a sample JCL, which is actually using the proc that we have discussed in our previous slide. So in this sample JCL, I've used the proc overriding technique to include the time parameter on step 1 and on step 2, I have actually overwrite the existing file which was mentioned in the proc, right? So this is how you can use a proc overriding technique to override various parameters and file name in your, pro, in, in your JCL procedures. So ladies and gentlemen, this marks an end to our today's presentation and I would request you all to do subscribe to our channel because we need your support to grow our channel. And in case if you have any question, 
then please do mention that in the comment section and i'll going to respond back after this presentation and in case if you like this video then share it with your friends and in case if you don't like this video then please do mention the feedback so that i can know what extra you're looking for and i'm 100% sure that in my next video i'll going to get all those details that you're looking for so ladies and gentlemen once again thank you so much for listening so patiently bye bye and take care